Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thank you so much for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. I know that you spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm really pleased to welcome my very special guest to the show today, Alana Moore. Alana, welcome. So glad that you're with me. Hi, Caroline. I'm delighted to be interviewed by you. Well, thank you, my dear. And I know that you are in Paris at the time. So how lovely to be having this international conversation via Skype. Yes, isn't it lovely? I'm delighted too. (laughs) It is. Well, I thank you so much. I want to tell our listening audience all about you. You are a professional web designer specializing in creating tailor-made sites for small businesses and in teaching non-technical people the skills to maintain their own websites and reach an ever-growing audience. You run workshops in London and Paris, and you're passionate about demystifying web design for ordinary people, which I really love. And you have a fantastic book out called Create Your Own Online Store in a Weekend. And we're going to be talking about all of those things today. But Alana, I'd love to hear your take. So you didn't start out as a technical kind of person. You say that you're a self-taught techie. So tell me that story. Yes, that's right. I am indeed a self-taught techie. Well, um, about How did that all around, get started? Uh, yes, well, around about the millennium time, I was here in Paris, uh, slightly running out of options, actually, because while Paris is the most wonderful place to live, other people uh, like myself who don't come from here actually find it quite hard to find a job. That's to say that our qualifications don't ne- don't necessarily translate. So really, I had to find a freelance job. Um, so I'd been fascinated by the internet for quite some time. Um, and I thought, well, let me get to the bottom of this. It's something that I really want to kind of crack. It's the thing of our time. Uh, I said to myself back in 2000, um, I want to find out how it works. So I started digging around a bit, got really into it, and kind of found the freelance job that I was looking for. So yes, I'm totally self-taught, which isn't probably such a good thing in France, but I think it really helps me with most of my clients, actually, because they don't see me as some kind of alien techie. <laughs> I can really quite relate to what they're doing. You know, having done quite a few different jobs of my own before and having had my own small business, I talk to them really, I think, in a much more approachable way. So really, that's that's how I got into it. And lots of my friends are terribly surprised, actually, because they didn't think I was a kind of techie person. But it turns out that I am. Good for you. But you know what I love about that, Alana? You're able to humanize it, right? Like you said, you're not a techie alien. You're very relatable and you're helping that's all I, of us, you know, become that's more hope. tech savvy. Yeah, that's what I hope. I, I have a lot of clients who come to me. They come to my home and they sit in my kitchen and really they look at that as if they're at their wits end. You know, they know they have to get a website. They don't know how to go about it and they're terrified. So I I think that uh, the great thing would be to unterrify people, uh, to enable them to kind of get into this world that they have to be in. I like it. I like it. Very <laughs> practical. So talk to me at how, about how you became an author, right? So you, you've been a, a teacher of sorts, helping people navigate the world of web design. And, and certainly that has been a, a wonderful process to teach people why it's important and then do it for them. But what about writing? You know, when did you become an author? Yes, I became an author actually quite recently. Um, I started writing my first book two years ago now. And in fact, I wrote three books within a really short space of time. What happened was that I kept getting these clients coming to me. And before we could really get going building their website, I had to really give them a kind of, if you like, training session because they didn't know what content they needed for their site They didn't know how they should present themselves. Um, They didn't really know really what a website did consist of. We all have this idea about wonderful looking websites, but really it's not suitable to have one kind of website if you need another kind. For example, if you just need a a kind of business brochure, something that doesn't do very much, maybe with a blog added onto it, you really don't need something that's terribly highfalutin. Uh, So I found that I had to have a really kind of... uh, kind of a getting the ground straight session with all my clients before I began 
and then I thought this really could turn into a kind of a handbook. It was about that time that I really got into WordPress. WordPress was really my first discovery in terms of letting people get their own hands on their own website, which is really liberating for them. So I, I rolled the two things together. I wrote a how-to, as in how to get yourself online, and really it became a how to get yourself online with WordPress. Excellent. So that was and, my first book. And your, that was your, my first book. your newest book is Create Your Own Online Store in a Weekend. And I have to say, I love this book. It's such a great resource. In fact, I've, I've bought a few copies for other people who oh, well, are... Oh, how nice of you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. But I, I have because it is a terrific resource, especially for those who aspire to sell their wares, their products or their services online. And as you said, you've demystified this for, you know, the man next door, the woman next door and help them make it a reality. So how did this book come to pass? Well, this one came about in exactly the same way as the first one did, actually. Um, a lot of people came to me, repeated numbers of people came to me saying, actually, I need to sell online. How on earth do I go about it? And now, a few years ago, I kind of had to hesitate a bit before telling them because this wasn't really something that you could do by yourself easily. But actually, more and more do-it-yourself systems came to my attention and I started writing out a little kind of worksheet to hand over to people. Um, and of course, that grew into a book as well. I found all kinds of absolutely fantastic systems, not only WordPress, many other ones. Um, yeah, it, was, it became a wonderful, wonderful field to discover. I found out so many fabulous systems. I talked to so many people doing it. It, it was a wonderful discovery. I really enjoyed doing that book. It was brilliant. Plus, plus, it helps all the people who come to me and ask, you know, how on earth can I get online without getting a mammoth budget or becoming a kind of whiz kid? Well, that's what I love about it. It's really do it yourself. Now, of course, it's helpful to have experts like yourself guiding and coaching, but how wonderful to have this resource where you can really take some ownership in, in creating your own online store. So well, bravo. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. People don't want to have to send an email to me every time they need to upload new products. I mean, they really don't. Today, you really don't. There are so many fabulous ways that you can get up online. You know, even if you don't know anything about design and you certainly don't want to learn anything about programming. I mean, the, the playing field is really beginning to level out. It's, it's brilliant. I'm very excited. <laughs> you know what I love, Alana? You're fascinated by people who run businesses, certainly yes. yourself included, and your mission is to help guide people. So tell me why mm. you derive such great satisfaction from that. Well, I suppose I might not be your normal techie person in that I really like the human aspect of my work. I really like it. Even if I'm sitting in my kitchen or even if I'm sitting in the cafe where I very, very often spend hours working, I might not actually talk to anyone, but I'm interacting all day with people. I'm firing out emails. I'm answering questions. Basically, I write explanations all day long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're a solution provider, which is which is extraordinary. I suppose I am. I hadn't thought about it that way, yes, but I like Yes, yes. There you go. <laughs> a new tagline. <laughs> yes, so, that's right. How do, how do you think the internet can change people's lives? Well, as I just kind of touched on, it's really beginning to level things out. I wouldn't say that everything is completely level. If you think of a great big store that has an online branch or wing, if you like, they've got a team of photographers, they've got a team of programmers, they've got people who write fantastic copy. So uh, they, I mean, they do have resources that you as an individual person setting up a small business might not have. But the fact that there exist wonderful systems like Shopify or Squarespace, I mean, they really mean that you can get a very sick looking site up with lots and lots of bells and whistles without going near any technical business, any programming, and without having to hire anybody. So really, you can get yourself looking just as professional as they can without the team of people that you have to pay. So do you ever fear that you're going to put yourself out of business being so helpful to everybody else? <laughs> no. Absolutely not at all, because almost everybody needs a website, almost everybody. Even if you don't have a, a small business, many, many people want to get their own word out in the world by starting off a blog. So, I mean, it's really true to say that almost everyone today needs a website. Many people don't want to do their own. Many people email me saying, help, help. 
can you do it for me? So I actually get quite a stream of people through the books, which is odd. Before, I just had my own network of entrepreneurs who knew each other and, you know, it was really by word of mouth. Now I get people writing it all the time saying, can you and the people who work for you get our site online, please, because we can't face it ourselves. So really, no, there's no question of putting putting us, you know, out of business, not always, at all. Always, always business, right? So Alana, yeah, yeah. what is yeah. your best advice for people who are just starting out, who plan to set up their own website or perhaps launch an online store or maybe even a blog? What's what's the beginning point? What's the first thing they need to do? The first thing they need to do is choose the right platform because it's going to be a real pain in the neck to change it afterwards. By platform, I mean if you're going to use WordPress.com, which is the hosted, if you like, the light version of WordPress. If that's not rude, it's not light. Let's just say it's the, let's say it's the ready-to-go version. Yes, well put. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so people will want to choose that one if they don't want any kind of technical headaches at all and they don't want to roll their sleeves up. Or you might want to go for the self-hosted WordPress, which is, if you like, the full version. That That's guaranteed to give you a few more headaches, but some people really want to take control. I'm one of those people who loves fiddling, so I would always go that way. However, I must say, I mean, of course, those are just two platforms. You might want to set up a beautiful, flashy, swanky-looking site on Squarespace, for example. There are lots and lots of different platforms you could use. By platform, I just mean the system that you're going to use to get yourself up online with. Uh, so the first thing is to choose the right one. Weigh up whether you're somebody who's going to get frustrated if you can't make all the changes themselves or whether you're someone who wants to have it almost all done for you uh, and have it very, very easy to, to get up and running with. For example, a system like Wix will let you get up and running really fast with a beautiful looking template. Also look at costs. Um, I mean, I really think everyone needs their own domain name. That's something that you shouldn't be afraid of doing because you look just so much more professional, even if it's just a blog, if you have your own domain name. Um, but really, you don't need a big budget. It could be that all you need is your domain name. That's it. So choose your budget. Something like Shopify will look very, very swanky, but it will cost more than doing something a little bit uh, less flashy like Wix. So the platform, the budget. Something else really important is don't feel you need to reinvent the wheel. In fact, I would stress even more, not really from your own point of view, not giving yourself a headache, I don't really mean that. What I mean is that it may actually look better at the end of the day if you don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, so a platform like WordPress will let you use a most beautiful, wonderfully designed template, but you may be tempted to tweak it. A platform like Wix actually lets you invent your own design. However, I really would say you have professional templates at your fingertips here. Why mess around with them if, if design isn't your thing? I really think that you should choose a wonderful template that suits you exactly and don't fiddle around with it because that way you'll look a hundred times more slick. So that's my third bit of advice is um, don't reinvent the wheel for your own good. I mean, unless you really want to go wild and get creative, in which case you're going to have a whale of a time. But really, most people don't need to and I wouldn't advise it. I hope that doesn't sound boring, but that's the way to get yourself the best looking site. But I've got so many bits of advice because I've actually talked to so many people over the years who are, you know, who've set up their own site and who are running their own business. Um, another thing I can say that a lot of small business, small online shop owners have told me is... Um, that you can really shine with customer service. It, it's not actually my place to give business advice, but I'm passing this on because so many people have said it to me. Sure. If you're a tiny, tiny business, you really can compete with the bigger people by being more personal, by really paying attention to customer service. That's something that is a small business. You really need to make your priority. Gosh, I've got so many things to say. Can I say one more? Please, my dear, please. It's <laughs> fantastic. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, Another thing is really put your customer first. Now, I'm not actually meaning here in terms of customer service. I'm talking about how you write, how you convey your meaning on your website. Um, now, you'll see what I mean. If you look, if you take as a model a really well-established online store, maybe a huge high street shop that has an online wing. Now, just see how they manage to sell what we might think of as the most boring products. Just note how they explain them. Do they sound tired and, and bored when they're listing 
all the features of a washing machine or something like that. No, not at all. They manage to sound really excited. And how they do that is by twisting around every single feature and explaining how that's going to benefit the potential buyer. For example, you don't say something like, um, uh, something very dry like, uh, feature to turn on the washing machine to run the wash in the middle of the night. Instead, you say, save money washing in the middle of the night, cut down on, on your own stress, save time. You know, you put it, you always right. put it to the point of view of the potential customer. That's my biggest tip, really, probably my biggest. I've looked at so many small online stores and I've been asked my opinion. And really, that's the number one thing that I say to people is turn around your, turn around your copy so it's not we, 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 what we can do, but how you can benefit. Brilliant advice, Alana. Thank you for sharing that. And I want to recommend your book highly, Create Your Own Online Store in a Weekend. Alana, tell us how we can buy your book and how we can find you online. <laughs> well, you could probably the easiest way to find my book is on Amazon. Uh -huh. um, but also you can get my books on independent, oh, you know, uh, really in real, in real stores. If you want to, to give business to real, to real stores, absolutely. Yes. Brick and mortar yes, stores. You should, be able to, you should be able to get them everywhere, but Amazon is probably the quickest and easiest way. And as for me, you can go to my own website, which is alanamore.com. I think I better spell it. Please do. Um, <laughs> it's A L A double N A H. M -O -O -R -E com. So that's my online home. Do send me a message if you have questions because I spend my days answering people's questions. So I'd be more than happy to help. Wonderful. And you're also on Twitter and Facebook. And we can also yes. read your wonderful blog, uh, which is part of your website, correct? It is. That's right. Wonderful. That's right. Alana, what a joy to have you on. You are a treasure and so incredibly helpful to all of us non-technical people. And you're making it a very simple and you're, you're reassuring us with wonderful self-confidence. So thank you for what you do. And well, I wish you, you great Caroline. success. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. You take good care. And I hope that we meet thank in person you. sometime soon. Wouldn't that be lovely? Thank it you, Caroline. Would. You're so welcome. And I want to thank our listeners for tuning in to your working life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. True career and life satisfaction is really possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.